Welcome to this week's SV Lynx video. Well, we've got a lot of work to get done on the boat this week, so we want to get over to the lot and work on that. Um, there is a little bit of concern about rain later this week, but we'll have to see uh, what we're going to do in terms of that. Yeah, we'll find out about midweek when the uh, reports get a little more accurate because when you're when you're six, seven days out, uh, it's just not very accurate. Within three days, pretty close. So we'll find out and we'll decide what we want to do in the latter part of the week based on that rain. So let's get over the lot and we'll see what's happening. Today we're preparing our cradles here to, uh, for when we flip the holes over because that's coming fairly soon. And so what we're doing is we're putting down this carpet here. Uh, There's actually the pieces right here. And then we put the plastic over the top of the carpet. And then we're going to glass sheets of fiberglass onto here, several sheets and carpet. This is just to not stick to anything. And once we get all of the layers of fiberglass on there, the reason this is sitting here is we're going to set this on the wet fiberglass so that it forms to the shape of this exactly on there because it'll be a little squishy and this will this is close but that'll make it form exactly so that's why we set this here on another piece of carpet so that it's ready to go just lift and set down onto the wet fiberglass right here and uh, after that's all set up we can uh, lift it off and uh, then we'll take that same piece of carpet and we'll glue it to the inside of it once it's all hardened up. And then that'll become the nice uh, padded sheath for this cradle to set this hole onto. And uh, of course we're measured right where the bulkhead goes and that centers right on the center of this um, cement pad. And you look at this and you go, but it's not centered on the pad. That's because this hole is not correct right now because once we flip it around, this will be over here in the center of this. So. Uh, we checked all that with measurements, so we're good to go there. So we're going to go ahead and, and cut the fiberglass now and lay those down and set this over on here and let it set up. Then we'll move on down the hole and do the next one. And then we'll move over to the port hole since it's now finished up. And uh, we'll get to doing it as well. Uh, right now it's got a lot of dew on it from last night, but um, we'll get that all dried off. and and such before we do the same thing to this one. Now it's very likely we're gonna do this one tomorrow instead of today, we'll finish this one today. And the reason for that is simply that we want this barrier coat, which is an epoxy, to have more time to set up even harder because epoxy will seem to get hard right away within you know eight hours, but it really takes longer than that, several days before it becomes to full hardness. And we don't wanna scratch this and such messing around with these things. So we want to make sure that this uh, epoxy is real hard. So we'll give it till tomorrow as well. And that'll give it five days since we uh, put this on. All right, now we're cutting the fiberglass strips. We need 12 of these, three for each cradle. So uh, we've measured out our distance. And now we're just going to cut It's time to wet out our three fiberglass sheets that we're going to be putting on for each of the cradles that we're working on. So We're using our sycamine epoxy for this because it sets up very slowly and we want to get three layers on wet. So. Uh, want this setting up too fast. Speaking of that, let's talk about that a little bit. We found that sycamine 
is uh, quite a bit different than the West system. And they each have their uses that are great, but you need to use them for what they're specifically good for. And uh, I need a little bit more down, a little bit more down here. And uh, for the sycamore, when we're laminating, which is what this is right now, when we're wetting out an entire sheet, it works excellently for lamination. And that is also what Shoning wants us to use when we're laminating the actual boat. This is just the cradle, so it's not that big a deal. But when we're doing the boat, the Sickerman has the right properties for the strength it needs in uh, lamination. Having said that, it's not very good comparatively for fairing. When we mix it for fairing, the consistency of it isn't as smooth as West System. And uh, a little bit more here. And so it's not only is it smoother going on, which means less uh, problems with orange peeling and stuff like that, just easier to apply. But even more importantly than that, once it has set up, the West system is easier to sand the fairing compound than the sycamine is. The sycamine tends to be harder and more difficult to sand. So, going forward on the boat, we have a certain amount of sycamine that we already got from our kit. And we want to use that because uh, epoxy is expensive. Now, of course, we use it for all the lamination, but there is more sycamine than what the lamination will need. So what we'll do is we'll use the sycamine for applying uh, or tabbing a panel, because those don't need to be sanded. We just put uh, peel ply on it, and when it's uh, set up, we pull the peel ply, and then we ferret. No sanding, so it won't matter. But when we get to the laminating of When we do the uh, tabbing, we, we use the sycamine. When we use the uh, fairing compound on everything, all the green stuff that we have to fair inside and some outside of the boat still, we're going to use West System Epoxy, make it easier to apply and easier to sand. So if you've got any extra, pour it around sort of towards the edges. There, it looks good and wet out now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to roll it up. It's easier to apply onto the hull. Get this one on and get to two more and then we'll have one more cradle done. Okay, time to put our fiberglass on here. We did that. I'm going to get the next layer going.
hop on here pretty quickly. Okay. Slowly. After much grumbling and massaging and such, we finally got this thing on here. We're level this way, we're level that way, and we're the same distance on either side. We'll call it done. After we uh, take it off, we'll also tab, uh, put the, some coves in and tab the inside and outside of that a little bit. So uh, it will be fine. Ran into a little problem. The form doesn't fit. And we checked where it goes and it's centered on here. It won't fit. We even decided to cheat it forward a little bit where the, where the hole gets a little bit smaller, see if it fit. We cheated it forward as much as you possibly can. Still won't fit. Still too narrow. We checked against the forms here to make sure that the sides of the holes have not bowed out a little bit over time and they had. So we added these straps on here, pulled it back into shape, still doesn't fit. And it's off by quite a bit. It's off by about that much. And so as you're lowering it down, it just stops about right here. You can't go down any lower. And this will get thicker once we put on three layers of 450 gram fiberglass. And it won't even fit without it. So the only conclusion we can have to this is, since, the, since we've checked and we're right up against the forms on this, so this hole is exactly where it should be. So all we can say is that the MDF is cut a little bit wrong from the factory on that. So we have to cut our MDF forms. So we're gonna go over there and uh, scribe a line in the right distance, leave a little tiny bit of a gap for that extra fiberglass and cut the uh, opening on the MDF just a little bit wider so that it'll actually fit on the hull. All right, so we've taken this off the hull. It's uh, still a little green, but it's uh, setting up. And I'm just gonna trim off some of this excess here. This should support the hull nicely now once it sets up completely. And uh, that's enough of a, a cradle there. And we know it matches the hull exactly because it was built on the hull with a little room for the carpet that we're going to put on here to give it a little pad for when we uh, don't want to scratch up our nice bottom paint and such. So there'll be a pad on here. And we left room for that since we made this on top of the pad. The starboard stern is all finished up and uh, we're working on the other three now that we've got the first one done and figured out what we're doing. So uh, this one's going to work out great and uh, we're on to the others. Both of these are now in, and they're uh, all uh, the fiberglass is on, and they're setting up. By tomorrow, we'll be able to lift those off and trim them off. And so we've got one more to go over on this hole here. We'll do that after lunch. Well, we had to change plans. We were going to be putting the copper coat onto our canoes over the next two days, today and tomorrow. Uh, so. We can't. And the reason that we really don't want to is that uh, a storm has showed up that's going to be coming in on Saturday, two days from now, and it's gonna go for three days. And so we don't really want to, uh, I mean, we could do the copper goat and it would still have enough time to set up, but we would rather prepare the rest of the lot for the rain instead and get to that next week when it's gonna be nice and sunny. So 
This is our 32 foot trailer, which is replacing these uh, shipping containers. Now, right now we're gonna put it right here and, but that's temporary because eventually we're gonna sell this shipping container over here and we'll move that trailer in to that position. But for now, we're gonna put it here so that we can load all of those parts that are under this table over here uh, into the trailer today and tomorrow before the rainstorm hits to protect those. Because up until now, it really hasn't rained and we just covered them for dew purposes. But once we get a really serious rain, I don't wanna trust that because those parts are expensive. We don't want them getting wet while we uh, haven't finished them. So uh, the trailer's coming in here right now and we're going to, uh, we've already put the shelving in shot inside. These are our shelves that we used for the green container to hold all of that um, foam parts. And we're just putting it right back here. And uh, Brian's fixing it to the side of the trailer right now to make sure that it's not going anywhere. And uh, those are the shelves that will go up onto it in a few minutes. But we're about to back this trailer in. So uh, as soon as he uh, brings the bobcat down, which he's unloading right over there, uh, we will move this over to the side here and then hook this trailer up and we're going to back it in with the bobcat. That's the scheme today. And once we get that all done and those shelves are all in here and everything, then what we're going to do is uh, start loading all of those green parts in. We probably won't finish that today and so tomorrow we'll load the rest of them. But again, it's not going to rain tomorrow. It's the next day after that. So we can get it all in there and all dry and nice before the big rainstorm arrives. The holes, as you can see, we've already covered the far one over there. It's ready for, for rain. And uh, not that there's much danger to these holes currently. They already have their barrier coat on them and that kind of stuff, but we cover them anyway, just because. So that's what we're up to. Instead of uh, moving this with the truck, we're doing this with the Bobcat because there's just not enough swing room for a big three quarter ton truck here. So we have a ball on the end of that Bobcat and uh, that gives us a lot more room to maneuver here. It just makes it into the yard here. And if this was its permanent home, this would suck but it is not as permanent home. Uh, we'll be able to uh, move this where the other shift container is eventually. This is just temporary uh, so that we can uh, get this stuff out of the rain. We'll move this back out when we take the shipping container out. So we're bringing Brian all of the parts and he is in here sorting onto the shelves and uh, we're writing down the names of what's where, you know, on the wood. So, like, that's there, and we have down there. So, uh, we can get these sorted. But all the pieces, the same pieces, are grouped together again. So, uh, we've done this before, and now we're doing it again. It's day two of loading all of the green furniture and flooring and stuff like that into the new white container. And so uh, we've got the Admiral here again and Brian's inside doing the sorting and putting on the shelves. And uh, we're using the tables to kind of sort them. So we have the larger pieces and the medium pieces and the small so we can stack them properly over there. So the rain, um, this big storm that I mentioned is actually moved up and it's gonna start tonight. So it's good that we got this trailer in here and got all these pieces in before the big storm, so this will all be protected now, so good deal. Brian's in here, still sorting. We're getting down to the end of it, so there's gonna be plenty of space. 
the helm that we're doing right now, these uh, helm pieces uh, are going down there, and then uh, we've got all the offcuts that are going to go down there, and that's closing in on it. All right, we're getting down to the last few offcuts. Well, that's a wrap. We've got uh, the trailer in yesterday, half of it in, the green stuff back in, sorted. Today we got the rest of it in here sorted, and we are done out of here because the rain comes within the next 20 hours or so. So, and we've marked along here again exactly what's on each shelf everywhere, so it's easy to get to. So we're back to organized again after our crazy swap of the shipping container. We still have to swap the other shipping container, but the city's given us some extra time on that, so we're going to use it and keep that thing for a couple more months. So uh, anyway, uh, we're good to go, and uh, that's it for today. Uh, we've also, of course, uh, covered the holes and anything else that's out there, so we're good for three days of rain. This week at the lot, we prepared for the rain that was coming, got everything under cover and the rain is now here. So, what do you do when it's raining and you can't work on the boat? You work on planning and design. And the rain got us thinking, how about planning for the rain catchment system? Right, and what we're talking about right now is how the water is collected and stored on our boat so that uh, we don't have to always make water because it's a lot cheaper to collect it when it rains. But we're not talking about the filter system right now. We actually want to talk about the design of the actual cabin top roof for how it collects the rain and channels it down to the filter system. Now, Shoning Designs gave us a design for this for the 1520, and I want to mention that system would work just fine. Functionally, it's great. But we have a few other things that we would like to achieve besides just the collection of that rain. So let me show you what we're thinking about in a new design for our range catchment system. So let's go take a look at that. The plans called for us to glass on PVC pipe with holes drilled on one side all the way around the sides in front of the roof. As you can see, the cabin top angles down to the sides and the whole top is sloped forward, as you can see in this render. All the rain would enter the PVC pipe, flow forward and collect toward the leading edge of the cabin top, which would work just fine. But what that doesn't give you is a very good railing to hold on to as you move along the side decks in inclement weather. As an alternative, we could raise the PVC pipe on a short piece of paneling. On top of that short foam wall, we would glass on a PVC pipe, which would give you something to grab on as a handrail as you move up the side deck. That's also a desirable feature of this design. In that case, we wouldn't drill holes in the PVC, and just let the water flow along the short wall beneath the PVC. Our concern has nothing to do with either of those functionalities, the water collection and handrail. We know we will want to rest our Gluteus Maximus on occasion taking a seat on the edge of the roof. Sitting on a short, upright, rounded edge of the wall would not be comfortable. It's also not the most aesthetic of solutions either, though that's a lesser concern. What we decided to do is go the opposite direction, creating a trough under the roof edge that will collect the water and send it forward the same way. However, that does not give us a nice handrail. Therefore, we've decided to modify that idea slightly, creating an inset portion for your fingers to grab as a handhold as you go up the deck. Now, we have a trough for the rainwater to fall into and flow forward, plus a handhold as we walk up the deck, and the top is just a small one inch or 26 millimeter gap in the roof. So resting your hind end on it for a seat is much more comfortable. And it's a bit more aesthetically pleasing since it will be hidden underneath the roof and the roof will look fairly smooth. To create this trough, we'll be cutting off a U-shaped section of the cabin roof out beyond where it meets the windows. Then we'll add two sections of foam to create the inset portion. We'll have access to round off these edges with a router and add a cove of thickened epoxy to this lower section right here while it's still accessible before 
reattachment of the cabin top. Next, we add this last piece of foam, which will be the connection that we epoxy back onto the roof. Finally, we'll add one more cove down through the gap to round off that final 90 degree turn. Then we can start glassing this whole system to the cabin top to make it very strong, allowing us to sit on it when we wish. We'll have to add a similar trough to this rear section of the top behind the helm, though the rain that collects in this small area will not run forward to the rainwater collection area. To make it so that the rain back there doesn't sheet off, we'll create a tube to take the collection water down to where it will exit at deck level. So that's our plan for our new rain catchment system. We'll use off-cut foam from our kit to add this to the boat so it won't cost us anything extra to make this change. So that's our design for the rain catchment system. We'd love to get your input on our design because it is only a design at this point. So anything you would like to comment, let us know. Yeah, and uh, we would uh, like to hear just what your opinions are on it. And we'd also just like to thank you for watching our video and thank all of our patrons. Uh, we always appreciate all the support we get from our viewers and our patrons. So thank you again. Thank you. And don't forget to oh. like and subscribe and click on the bell icon to be notified of our next video. Yes, because that really helps us and we do appreciate that. So we will see you next week where we will try to get to the copper coat. We were going to do this week before this rain changed our plans. So back to the copper coat next week. See you then. Bye.